let's check out some art. No, this isn't some action man box art. This is Warhammer 40,000. Now, as a child, I was never really much of a fan of Action Man. I didn't really like the scale. I think in the US of A, he was called G.I. Joe, and then in the 80s, they scaled him down, giving us the good old G.I. Joe brand, which was then renamed to the terrible Action Force here in good old Blighty. Do you think this one's got the little button on the back of his head to move his eyes? I think that was known as the Eagle Eyes Action Man. Now, as this is set in the 40k universe, what do you think this is? Is it a Space Marine Scout, perhaps? Or maybe an Imperial Guardsman? Now, I notice he is wading through the ditch. I do hope those trousers of his are waterproof, or else he's going to end up with soggy knickers. And nobody wants that. I really like the colours on this piece. It reminds me of some old wartime comics I used to read as a youngster. I have no idea where I got hold of those. Now, the man in the picture, be it either a scout or a guardsman, reminds me a little of Jai Courtney. Whatever happened to him? Apart from Spartacus and Suicide Squad, he seemed to sort of vanish. Maybe he is still out there, and I'm just not paying attention. I'm sure one of you will know. Now, if you look at his face, you will notice there's some lines running down it. Are they scars or beads of water from all his splashing? On the front of his chest plate or body armour, whatever you want to call it, are some little pouches. They look perfect for holding his Game Boys. One is a colour Game Boy, the other is an OG. I'm actually in the market for an OG Game Boy, so if you've got one you don't want, then please let me know. His forearm armour is quite strange looking, isn't it? It looks sort of thin, and then it has a big bulbous part. For what? His muscles? An easter egg dispenser? Who knows? Now, are you able to tell me what weapon it is that he's carrying? I would assume it's an auto gun or las gun variant, but you never really know with these old pieces of artwork. My name's Marcel, and this is Snakeworks. I fancy doing some swamp-based Imperial Guardsmen now, you know? I guess Catachans are pretty much the same sort of thing, but with added water effects and mud. Oh! Cover your eyes, folks. We appear to have a half-naked Eldar here. So this is an interesting cutaway diagram of an Eldar, or an Eldari, as they're now known. Why did they change the name again? The head shape is a little different to what I always imagined. I always assumed the Eldar were just like humans with pointy ears, like Vulcans. However, this one has almost cat-like eyes. They're huge, and I'd like to see more of this. Well, it's either that or he's just got really good eye makeup on. The rest of the Eldar's naked body is rather standard looking. I wish I was as toned as that. Sadly, a lack of exercise and sleep is preventing that right now, but I'm sure we'll get back on top of things soon. Anyway, for some reason, the Eldar in the diagram has the biggest piece of shoulder pad armour I've ever seen. Well, it's more like a collar, isn't it? Does this armour exist on any Eldar miniatures? I don't think I've seen it before. Am I missing something here? The armour style itself is very sharp looking, isn't it? I get more of a Dark Elder vibe to it than your normal Craft World Elder. What's the current term for Dark Elder? Drakari or something? There's a lot of little symbols dotted about the piece pointing to various pieces of the armour. Do you recognise any of them? What do you think they could possibly mean? One of them, pointing at his bicep, is a stick man. And that's awesome. Welcome, comrades, to the war zone. Okay, so at first glance, I have a hunch that we're looking at a few Imperial Guardsmen, or Imperial Army Men, as they were known during Road Trader. Or was it Trooper? Anyway, I do, however, think that the flip down helmets are different to what the usual Imperial Army Troopers had, but it's possible again I'm wrong, as they might have actually had them. 
Now I'm sure you're all used to Imperial Guardsmen having las guns or auto guns at a stretch. This gun appears to be neither. Whatever it is, does have an awesome looking barrel. The chap to the rear appears to be mouthing a warning or perhaps giving orders. He's clearly motivated by something they can see outside of the frame. In the background, we can see some sort of tower. Is it a sentry tower? Is it for keeping people in or out? It's very primitive looking too, although the little radar dish on top does add to the sci-fi theme. Do you think this army is on the attack or the defensive? You decide. The presence of the tower says to me they're probably on the defensive, but that tower could quite easily belong to the other side in the battle. Now when I first saw this picture, I actually thought the black wisps in the background were tornadoes, but upon closer inspection I think they're just burning wrecks or ruins. You can see those ruins in the background too, and this area has clearly seen a lot of combat. Now regarding that sentry tower, it's actually just like one I made when I was back at school in the 1920s. Sadly, I think it got thrown out with all of my other Warhammer stuff when I became a late teenager. Or was I a mid-teenager? Never can remember. Such a waste. Here we see what I'm pretty sure are Space Marines, the Angels of Death. This piece, like a lot of the art featuring Space Marines in Rogue Trader, is in a very grim dark style. A very strange style. I don't know how you really describe it. Grim dark or just something else. Now again, as per usual, the Marines are wearing what we now know as Mark VI armor, although these suits are very stylized. They don't quite look right. They look a bit more bulbous than usual. Normally, Mark VI armor has just a few bonding studs on the left shoulder plate, but these, these have loads. They look a bit more like buttons. One of those shoulder pads is even more strange. Not only does it have loads of studs and overlapping plates, but it also has a little oval cutout with what looks like a beetle shell showing through. That's very odd indeed. Either that or it's an 80s car air vent. There are also a lot more cables and pipes on the Marine's armour. This time it gives me sort of HR Giga vibes. I'm sure the man was a huge inspiration for artists around this time. The weapons being carried are really rather weird. All those bulbous parts and chamfered tubes reminds me of wasps nests for some reason. Wasps nests look hideous to me, but they're also magnificent and beautiful in their construction. In the background, there's yet more marines. I think we're looking at a squad. However, the one in the middle has a very interesting looking chainsaw. It looks like a Christmas tree. He's also standing next to a rock formation that looks a lot like the ones on LV246, or is it 426? A sort of ball on a stick protrusion. This here is a very famous picture. You should feel honoured to see such a historical artefact. So what you're looking at is an Inquisitor. But not just any old run of the mill Inquisitor. Oh no, this is Inquisitor Obi-Wan Sherlock Clouseau. Did you manage to get all the references there in the name? We have Star Wars. Sherlock Holmes and Detective Clouseau from what I assume was the Pink Panther. Our Inquisitor has a very angry expression on his face. Maybe it's because he just found out what his name is. Now a lot of the characters and artwork in Rogue Trader are based on real people, usually staff members. Is this one of those pieces? If so, who do you think this is based on? On the top of the Inquisitor's head is what appears to be a shower of sparks, or some sort of aura effect. What on earth is going on here? Is it a visual indicator of his psychic abilities? What is interesting to me is that crenellated crop top. I've never seen one of those before or since. It even has a lovely yin-yang symbol on it that used to be all the rage. 
Don't see them so much these days, do you? Now, we used to draw yin-yangs all the time at school when we were supposed to be working. People also did that weird S-shaped thing. I prefer drawing stars myself. Now, I have to admit, the first time I saw this piece, or pieces, I thought we were looking at two different things. But as it turns out, they're meant to be two of the same thing. The one on the left, I think, is the dead version. So what we're looking at here is a sand clam. Yep, a clam. Super original stuff right here, folks. In its alive form, it looks like some sort of veiny, fleshy sack with little claw-like legs. Nasty. I think these are meant to be big underground monsters that swallow you up when you walk over or near them, like the sandworms in June. Shy Halud. Do you think they grow in the sand from little larvae, or move into the sand later as it's easier to feed there? I feel I need to know more about them. At the end of the day, it's just a big bivalve, isn't it? Maybe people like to catch and eat them, like oysters. Have any of you ever eaten an oyster? If so, what did you think? I do wonder if these ones have pearls. If they did, they would be massive. Worth a fair bit in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, I reckon. In this next piece, we have a couple of space marines. These space marines appear to be interacting with each other, having a chat. The chap facing us with his hand outstretched looks like he might be offering something. Is it a red or blue pill? Is this Morpheus and Neo? He also has one hand behind his back, hidden away. Maybe he was playing that age-old game. Pick a hand, left or right. My dear granny used to play it with me all the time. If I guessed right, I got a bag of sweets. Usually licorice pipes. They were lovely. I don't think they make them anymore, you know. Both of the marines are wearing Mark VI plate, which is typical for the era, although it looks a little more detailed than usual. There is one detail I do quite like. The offerer, as I like to call him, has his chest pipes curving around his neck and head and joining up with the backpack. On the miniatures, they used to just sort of disappear, didn't they? I think this is a nice touch. The marine in the foreground has a big death's head eagle on his shoulder pad. I think this was the old officer logo. Does it mean angels of death? Now, when did Games Workshop start using the term Angels of Death for Space Marines? Was it in the second edition Blood Angels Codex, or was it well before then? All right then, so here we have the namesake of the first edition of Warhammer 40,000. Here, we have a rogue trader. It's a lovely piece, isn't it? So off the bat, I notice he has a top knot. Top knots are a big thing in the current Horus Heresy and didn't really appear anywhere else, apart from a few pictures in Rogue Trader, this being one of them. Our Rogue Trader here has an odd expression on his face. He looks a little worried or angry, or perhaps both. Around his neck is a quite strange contraption. It looks a bit like something you'd see in a Saw movie. And then I look up and see it's just the base of his helmet. No oh well, silly me. There are some weird little sticky out bits on the left of the helmet. Are they clamps to hold it together? Now, I always assumed rogue traders would dress in the highest of fashion, much like myself. But this one, he's wearing just a pair of overalls or an old t-shirt and trackies. Oh, and lovely looking moon boots. I saw a pair of moon boots in Next yesterday. Not for me, but for Snakeworks Jr. I'm thinking about going back to get them. The rogue trader is also wearing some interesting looking gloves or glove. They don't really look like they match the rest of his outfit. The weapon the rogue trader is holding up is a bolter. This time it actually looks like one, which is a nice change from all this old artwork and the weird weapons. Some Eldar up next in the gallery, and these Eldar do not look very happy. Well, the expressions on their hats doesn't. So somewhere along the line, I think someone swapped out the Eldar's usual armour for some wetsuits. These look very rubbery and shiny, a lot less armoured than normal. The Eldar's helmets 
have an interesting pattern on them. They do look a little like wasp bodies. Is it called the thorax? I might need to give David Attenborough a call to find out. Or is it Richard Attenborough? Amusingly, if you have a look at the Eldar with the heavy weapon, his helmet appears to have deflated a little. Maybe he popped it. Now, when it comes to weaponry, the Eldar at the front is dual-wielding his pistol. He's going for some extra cool points. One of those pistols, I believe, is an auto pistol. The other weapon is what I think is a shuriken pistol. But to me, it looks like the spaceship from that god-awful Battle Beyond the Stars movie. I've never once been able to sit through the entire thing. I always found it to be a poor man Star Wars. Maybe it's time to give it another chance. Now, I do seem to remember it had Robert Vaughan in it. He was in The Man From Uncle and that early 2000s TV show with the con artists. I think it was called Hustle or something. Was his name Robert Vaughan? Have I got his name right? What is that on there? It's a Shopkin. Interestingly, on the bottom it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Robert. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. War. Alrighty then, so here we can see space marines and orcs going at it. A matchup of the ages. They are fighting in some sort of city environment. This one looks a bit like Pankot Palace to me from the Temple of Doom. Now, I loved Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom growing up, but everyone says it's the worst one. Well, until Crystal Skull came along, and we don't even want to talk about that new one. How do you guys rank your Indiana Jones movies? I tried to watch the new one, The Golden Compass or whatever it's called, the other day, and I turned it off about 45 minutes in. It was just boring. So there's a lot of space marines in this piece which isn't really surprising, being a depiction of war. So what I think is happening here is the marines are storming the palace or castle. I believe the orcs are the defenders. Did they build this castle or did they just occupy it? I'll let you decide on that one. Again, as per usual, all the marines are wearing Mark VI armour, the best pattern of armour. Sadly, we can't see what legion or chapter these marines hail from. Knowing the era, they could be anything from Crimson Fists to Rainbow Warriors to Blood Drinkers. At the back of the horde of marines is what appears to be a marine hoisting aloft a banner pole. The banner pole itself looks a bit strange to me. Looks a bit like a palm tree. Maybe he's ripped it up as a souvenir. The two main combatants, front and centre, are switching to melee. The orc is using his big knife sword machete thing, and the marine is using his bolter in an overhead axe handle style. Is he planning to just twat the orc over the head with the weight of it, or is that how to use a bayonet? There is a bayonet on there, I can just about make it out. Whatever the situation is, it does look to me like the marines might have the upper hand here. Which is a change really, as usually in Rogue Trader era art, the marines are getting wrecked. That's some amazing artwork right there. If you want to see some more art themed videos, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.